Welcome back to Split the Party. I'm your host, Steve Osmond. Today we're talking about Savage World. Um, so my friends are kind of letting me off the rails now. They're letting me talk about the games that I'm really excited about, and this I am really excited about. Uh, I role play a lot, and I tend to end up changing uh, formats a lot. One campaign session I will be running high fantasy. The next is post-apocalyptic. The next is a zombie survival. And for a long time, I've been running each one of those in whichever world, I, whichever mechanic set I thought had the best world for that particular setting. Well, recently I've discovered Savage World, and their, their whole concept is that they have one rule set, and you just place your campaign setting on top of it. Now, they've got a, a number of static campaign settings that they do produce. For instance, you might be familiar with Deadlands, which is my favorite of their products. But they give you all the rules for making your own world, making your own universe, making your own rules uh, that will fit into Savage Worlds. The reason I like this is, again, I have been playing a number of different systems with my friends. It causes a little bit of a disconnect as they're learning new mechanics and making characters a different way for the first time. They're less connected to the storyline because they're more focused on, am I getting the rules right? Am I doing things correctly? Am I representing my character correctly? mechanically. I've been looking for a system like this because I can teach them a simple set of mechanics and then it's just please put your person into this. Put your character into this rule set. You already know how to do that. So one of the beautiful things about Savage World is that uh, they, they have intentionally made it, the mechanics kind of stay out of the way. For whatever skill check you're making, for a combat check, you're just trying to hit a target number of four. So if I need to shoot somebody I'm shooting somebody with a rifle, I will roll that. Now because I'm a hero, or what they call wild card, I get to add the wild die. I will roll both of these, and then take the best result out of the two of them. As my, my statistic improves, for instance that was a d10, well I, I raised that particular statistic, so now I'm shooting a little bit better, I'm shooting a d12. The wild die always is a d6 unless you take special abilities that increase it. But it allows you to know, I, all I ever really need to do, unless the the DM says any different, I just need to hit a four. That's it. Just roll your dice, try and hit a four, and since it's a really easy target number and it's always the same target number, you're less concerned about the math, you're getting more into what you're doing, the dynamics of how your character is doing things, and then uh, the Game Master is encouraged to reward you uh, for role-playing very well or for describing your actions really well. Uh, now, about the product itself, the actual physical product, uh, you can see on the cover here, it is a uh, very visually appealing. The art style is really nice. They have two different, they have the paperback and the hardcover, so they have two different editions of this. It's extremely inexpensive at only $10, which for a core rule book is almost unheard of in role-playing systems. Uh, in here you do have obviously a lot of text, but then they, right off the bat, they go into large full-color pages of some of their settings. Again, here's Deadlands that I had talked about. The Weird Wars, uh, what if Nazi Germany had actually gotten their hands on some arcane objects, but they had also they had also started teaming up with werewolves, vampires, and had struck a deal with the dark powers that be to start working on their side during World War One and World War Two. So a really fantastic setting. Um, Savage World of Solomon Kane. It's more of a high fantasy setting. Rippers, which takes place in London, and you are monster hunters, but when you hunt down the monsters, you use pieces of them and graft them to yourself to become more powerful and to become uh, as powerful as they are to fight back. So they've got these fantastic settings that already exist, but again, like I said, they give you all the tools for creating your own setting as you go through here. And everything's very simple as a point-based system. You get a certain amount of points for your attributes, a certain amount of points for your skills, and it takes, I would say, probably 15 minutes to 15 to 20 minutes to make a character um, once, you've, once you're familiar with the rule system, and then you're ready to go. Again, that is something that is not, not very common in role-playing games. I, I, a lot of you who have played are probably aware uh, making a character can take sometimes an hour or more. Uh, so I really enjoy this system. I like its lightweight mechanics. I like uh, the openness to absolutely everything. They've got companions that they've added to this for fantasy, horror, sci-fi, and superheroes so that you can go with one of those flavors and get a little bit more in-depth in the mechanics. But all four of those things are covered just in the core rulebook. You can spend $10 on this product and be re ready to run any style of campaign that you could possibly want to. If you're a role player out there looking for a really, uh, a really fun 
lightweight system that you, can, you and your friends can really get into and really get into the story, Savage Worlds is what you're looking for. So I'd like to thank our sponsors today, Dual Bus Design, Excelsior Games and Comics, and SoundG Entertainment, and I'll see you out there in the Nerdverse.